this is Chandra with a God Said Disrupt Prophetic Word for you guys today. It is June the 3rd of 2024 and let us start with our prayer so that we may be in the spirit to receive it together. In the name of Jesus, Father, thank you for this revelation. Thank you for this word and that I get to share it with your children. We appreciate you for being the father who you are, that you always provide us word. You always provide us encouragement and guidance. We thank you for always answering and giving us what we need when we need it the most, Father. We glorify your name. Holy Spirit, I invite you in. I invite you in to share this word that is so needed for your children to grow in this season. In Jesus' mighty name, I lift you high and exalted you and I say thank you thank you for choosing me to share this word in your mighty name Lord God thank you Jesus amen so the word came to me this morning um, it is 6 3 24 in Hebrews that means a turn it's a punite or a descendant of an unknown pun or pun I guess it's just a punite maybe it's punite and that is found, they're found in, in Numbers 26, 23 as a son of Issachar of the 200 sons of Issachar. And so this is a in the season word um, in that the sons of Issachar were known for having their word or knowing the season so that they could share words, share revelations, share strategy of what to do with the word. And so Lord God, I pray that this brings forth revelation very similarly for your children in this hour in Jesus name, I pray. And so then when we look at the time, the time that the Lord brought this forth to me was around 754 this morning. And Hebrews 754 means length, a lengthening um, that is prolonged. And Daniel 427 says, Wherefore our king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee and break off thy sins by unrighteousness and thy um, iniquities by showing mercy to the poor if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. And so then I looked up the word lengthening and that means to give, um, give it into a point that is suited, uh, suited or suitable. And then tranquility is a Hebrew 79, 63. It means ease of prosperity. So not for my glory, Father, but for yours, Jesus. For yours alone, I glorify you, Lord God, forevermore. Amen. Yes, yeah, so we bring forth a works that brings a ease and a tranquility to Jesus in his mighty name. And so God said there are five ways of how you show up as a false prophet versus a real prophet of God, even though you are called by God. And so one, God said how you prepare. You show up as a false prophet if you only read the Bible to find a quick trick or a quick word or other subtle scripture to fit any listener. If it automatically um, is accepted being a prophet and you didn't give up anything, everyone would be a prophet, right? And so everyone would be a true prophet if that was the case. God said, my sheep um, stand in shock and then they backpedal or they run initially because being sheared, like cut, being sheared as an outcast is hard. It's hard for them and it's hard for me. Necessity work, but it is not fun by any means. God said, it's only fun when we see conversion after all the hard efforts, when the fruit is brought forth as soul. That's the beauty of being a real prophet. Every day, all day, you will be a sheared outcast. You will be a sheared outcast, he says, in the name of Jesus. You will repel people that are religious and spiritually blind, and you will attract the broken like flies to fresh fruit, y'all. They crave being healed by your light. And so the second way, God says, how you physically live. You show up as a false prophet if you still live in worldly ways. If you keep those around you who are not living kingdom righteously and then you keep them as your inner circle and so you and then you go a step further by you don't even mention or intentionally mention in the flow of the topic that i'm calling something out about them god said you are still having idols many variations they control your temper they control your mouth they control whether you are an undercover gossiper the drama starter the instigator the annoyance rallier so if someone is praising me are you avoiding it disowning it or talking about the person or are you encouraging others to gossip about them when they leave the space 
Are you, um, are your ears listening to secular worldly music? Do you obey um, what I have asked and centered you not to watch? And how often do you gossip? Y'all, so good. Number three, God said how you are seen, how you are seen. So as a false prophet, your light is not on consciously or it's not fully lit to serve the mission of Jesus. So nothing else, including what you do or what you say or how you go about it, seems to really matter. It's not going to matter, he says. You don't consecrate re regularly. You ignore Holy Spirit's prompts to stop eating certain foods. You emit a dull or a dingy light. And then God said, by regularly consecrating, and that means weekly. So if they're of the 52 weeks out of the year, you fast and pray 52 weeks on some level to some degree. And it, it changes as the Holy Spirit tells you. If he hasn't given you a regimen to follow him on your consecration walk with him, you need to do some very specific things to ready for that. And I'll share those things with you in just a moment. And so in looking at the time frame of 754 from the Greek or from the New Testament perspective, Greek 70, uh, 754 drills itself down to mean principal tax gatherer. And that is a reference um, to Luke 19 2. so let us read it but we're going to read it as uh, as the powerful scripture short chapter that it is we're going to look at verses 1 through 10 only and so luke 19 1 starts it says and jesus entered and passed through jericho and behold there was a man named zacchaeus which was the chief among the publicans and he was rich and he sought to see jesus who he was and could not for the press because he was of little stature and he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him for he was to pass that way and when jesus came to the place he looked up and saw him and he said unto him zacchaeus make haste and come down for today i must abide at thy house and he made haste and came down and received him joyfully and when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And then Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I gave to the poor. And if I have taken any from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation. Come to this house, for so much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Oh, in Jesus' name we read and pray. Amen. So I'm going to jump back to the beginning to share what the Holy Spirit has given me. So at the very beginning, it says, Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. So one, the breakthrough of you getting through your Jericho wall, you're in that season, that is today. God is pressing forward, pressing you through the Jericho wall that you shall not have to keep going lap by lap by lap by lap in Jesus' name, y'all. Yes, Jericho must come down because Jesus has come through it. Amen. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. And so then he says, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus identity he's given identity to you in this season and so you know that you're a child of god you know that you are called into this season but in this context you are walking in a dimly lit light or not in the light that god has chosen for you and that means that you are um unknowingly or maybe you are knowingly in the wolf in sheep's clothing pretending to be a, pro a prophet you cannot be a false prophet you are not called to be a prophet in the fivefold um, ministry, God is saying that in Him giving you an identity of who you are, He also has given you a role, a purpose to fulfill. And so you must walk in that light. Yes, you may be receiving prophetic message. Everyone has the, the gift of prophecy, the Father says. And so with that gift, um, you can you can create you can call things forth you can call things you can see in the spirit and you can call it down to earth yes but that does not mean that you are called to do it as a 
on ongoing role as an assignment in Jesus name. And so then he goes down to say um, further into it, it says, um, and, and he sought to see Jesus who he was. And so he uh, Zacchaeus was trying to stand taller, stand higher because he was short in stature, meaning he was a short man. So he uh, climbed a tree so that he could um, get uh, to a place where Jesus could see him, um, see him in the distance, but see him as he approached. And so God is saying that you are doing some works, but the works that you are doing are making you stand out. Yes, but not in the right light. You're not standing in the light that he has ordained for you. And so it is creating a sore light, a dingy light, a filthy light for you to be in. And you're not called to do that. So while, yes, there are very much so um, the enemy has sent false prophets. God is also saying that for some of you, you are um, confused as to who you are and what your role is and what he is wanting to do in your life. And so that you must come down off the pedestal, come down out of the tree that you have hoisted yourself up in, come down um, back to the beginning so that he can reset you, restore you to the place that you're meant to go so your trajectory will go where it's supposed to go in Jesus name. Amen. And then so as we move forward, it says he ran before and climbed up a tree and went up a tree that he shouldn't have been in. Um, that is not the tree assigned to him is not the office of that you are assigned to you're not assigned to the office of the uh, prophet. So if you've been wondering, am I a false prophet? Why is what I'm doing not working? It's just Lord, I feel like there's such a, 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 a struggle, a tug. The Lord says, my 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 yoke is easy and so your burden shall be light it should not be every scrape scrap it's always a in a in a spiritual fight or attack it's not going to be that way because he does offer protection he does offer guidance he does offer a way to elevate you through the ranks and so um, some of you have been asking, am I a false prophet? And I'm, as I'm sharing these five ways that uh, your actions and what you're doing, the Lord is saying, yes, you're making yourself a false prophet when I didn't call you to be a false prophet. In Jesus name. Amen. Ah, oh, that's so good. Okay. So then he goes on to say, um, and so it says, Jesus um, came to the place. So Jesus met him in a place as he is meeting now. Holy Spirit is meeting you now at a place. And he's saying, come down, come down Zacchaeus and make haste. Do it quickly. De-escalate your scenario, your situation very quickly and come down for today. I must abide at your house. So the Lord is in asking to be invited to his into your house so he wants to come and be in your house in the name of jesus thank you father we invite you in lord we invite you to partake with us we invite you to be a part of the conversation we invite you to leave the conversation to start the conversation to be in the middle of the conversation and be at the end of the conversation conversation in jesus name amen and so then as we turn and we um, continue, it says that Zacchaeus abided. Zacchaeus was obedient. So he did the work. He did what the Lord said. He came down off the pedestal. And so then that's going to make some people be disgruntled because your page isn't up. Your page isn't posted. Your page isn't pushing out new information. Don't worry about them. Don't worry about them. <laughs> He's telling me to hold it. <laughs> Don't worry about them. They are the least of your worries, right? Okay, so then it says Zacchaeus stood and, and said unto the Lord, Lord, I've done these good works. I've done the, I've given half to the poor, half to, you know, and if I've taken for someone um, out of error, then I'll give it back to them fourfold. The Lord is saying that he didn't ask you to do half. If you're his prophet, he's asked for all. That, that that's how you know if he's called you he asked for all and if you gave half then that meant you left a door open here a door open here a door open here a doors open all over the place and that means the enemy 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 has had a chance to infiltrate 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 into your space and so the lord if he has called you to be a prophet he is an all or nothing kind of a god who leads prophets in that way you don't, it's not sometimes, it's not half the time, it's not a part of the time, it's a hundred percent. It's all with him. Yes. Okay. So then we keep moving on. Then it goes on and say, um, Jesus says that this day is salvation. Come to the house, to this house for so much as he is also a son of Abraham. God is saying that you are called. Yes. 
but you are not called to the house of a prophet. You're not called to that office of the prophet. And so your, your works have to make sure that they are in alignment. And so in to do so, you're, you need to go back to step one. Let's go back to salvation. Go back to receiving his salvation so you can reset. He can restore you. Oh, that's so good, y'all. Because he could have just struck you down dead. He could have just ended it all. He could have put you on blast and gave, gave you over to his true prophets to uh to pounce you but he didn't do that because he is not a god to condemn he's a god to bring forth life he's a god to bring forth restoration in jesus name it's so good ah so good so i'm going to walk you through as the last of it says for the son of man is to come to seek and to save for that which was lost and so i'm going to walk you through how that comes about for you in this hour my sister and my brother so God said that you asked, am I a false prophet? Am I a false prophet because I'm working hard, I'm doing all these things and nothing is coming to fruit, I'm not seeing the fruit. And so God said, as we turn to Matthew 7, 7 through 7, 12 is your answer, a part of your answer. And so God said, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be open. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and that he that knocketh shall be open. Or what is, it, what is there of you whom his son asks bread? Will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more would your Father in heaven give of you good things if you ask him, right? And so it says, therefore, all things whatsoever ye would um, that man should do to you, do you even do them to them, so that for this is the law and the prophets. So... The Lord is saying in this and asking and receiving in the scriptures is that you've asked to be a prophet. You've asked to be a prophet. You've started to search. And so you just jumped in because you have this innate, uh, this information that's flowing to you and you're using it and thinking that it's what the Holy Spirit is providing you. But it is not from the Holy Spirit, at least not all of it. And so what is of the Holy Spirit, you're not digging into it deep enough in order for the true revelation to take root into your heart so that the door can be open so you can then go through it to stay in, to get into the office in the name of Jesus. But the other part of that is, is that some of you are not intended to be in the office, not as a full-time role, not as a full-time assignment. And so then as we move further down in Matthew 7, 13, looking at 7, 13 and 14, it says, this is the straight and the wide gate. And so it says, um, enter in ye at the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that lead to destruction. And there are many which will go their way, but straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life and few will go to find it. So this is where Jesus is saying that the world will lead you down a path, a very wide path, and a whole lot of people are going down, a lot of confused, lost, broken, hurt, um, and, and, and disillusioned people go down. They bypass and don't see the little gate. They don't see that little road that's headed, you know, that's um, only a few people are going down, that they're not making a lot of ruckus going to it in the name of Jesus. And then when they get to the little small gate that's teeny tiny, like Alice in Wonderland, little, then he lets them in. That gate is the gate that you want to go to to get to the house of the prophet or the office of the prophet. Amen. And so the Lord is saying that um, in your striving, you have skipped some steps, some very critical, essential steps that all his prophets go through, that all his prophets um, then teach and bring back forth to um, to the masses of those who are on the wide wide gate wide path leading to the to the to the gate of destruction in Jesus name and so then we're gonna go through this snippet and so then the false prophet falls just under it just under this in Matthew um, seven fifteen through twenty three and I won't read all of this but what you need to know out of this is a false prophet who is genuinely sent by the enemy God said 
is one who will always do something to deter you from receiving your light, deter you from doing good or receiving good. He may gift you things, but ultimately those covenants that you get when you receive those things bring you destruction. They don't bring you life. They don't bring him glory. Most importantly, you got to make sure that whatever you're receiving doesn't give God glory. And God is saying that you, some of you are even praising him for receiving it, but it's not from him. So he can't, he don't want to take credit for something that is bad, but he can make good out of it in Jesus name. Amen. Yes, he can make good out of it, which is what he's doing. He's saying that your works are half fruit um, fulfilled or half harvest fulfilled because you are not doing things that are very specific to his prophets in the name of Jesus. And so I'm going to walk you through those steps. And oh, he's so good to give them in, in a way that we can you can use them immediately and start to um, walk through the journey with Holy Spirit because that's who you want to be receiving anything from in the spirit. Amen. Number four, God said how you lack understanding of obedience, discipline, and integrity. So you would show up as a false prophet if you are not repenting, not serving someone, not seeking giving me the glory, God said, on a day-to-day -day basis. My prophets repent daily because they are standing in the breach as repairs for everyone else, literally everything else and everything in their lives. They must pray to me about others before themselves. They must give me praise just because they love me. They must praise me before they praise themselves. They must pray to me because they miss me. God said, number five, how you lane hop. So how you show up as a false prophet if you go around calling others false prophet to throw confusion or to cover yourself from speculation without the Holy Spirit commanding you to do so. Prophets don't judge others by self-desire. Inspecting people's actions and inspecting people's fruit, yes, that is a job prerequisite in being a leader in the office of the prophet. It is also only done by a command and a conviction of the Holy Spirit to do so. Because it brings a real prophet of Jesus no pleasure to create more issues, scandal, or hardship of converting souls for the office of the prophet. But it is done out of necessity and out of honoring the King of glory. Because he, y'all, he will get his glory in Jesus' name. Amen? Yes. Now, because Holy Spirit is true to nature, I can now walk you through um, the steps that you would take to get in position, to get in place to, to, to work as a real prophet of God. Um, if you're not called to be a real prophet of God, he will reveal that to you. Holy Spirit is going to tell you because there is a difference between being a prophet and prophesying. You must know that there is a difference and it's easy to prophesy. Just open your mouth and speak. You have the power and authority to speak because he made us in likeness of him, right? But what uh, it what brings about a, a true turn, a true turn in the window of being a prophet of God with an anointing and oiling of lighting your lantern to light up someone else's path is by you being called by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit. Your accountability and your responsibility of receiving that oil is vastly different. It is brick ton heavy, y'all. It's isolating, it's tiresome, it's weighty, it makes you cry, it makes your soul cry. It, it, it brings you, sometimes it brings you torture because God is receiving it as torture. You receive his burdening. And when he casts it on you to share the word of how to solve it, then, then and only then do you receive this elevation of faith, this elevation of joy, this elevation of energy that makes you untouchable because he has gifted you the word and the protection to do the work. Yes. Amen. And so um, how you become one of my sheep, my real sheep, God said, is how you start to walk in truth and in light as a real prophet if you have been falsely doing so, if you've been falsely prophesying unknowingly, some of you it's unknowingly, and then some of you it's very knowingly that you're doing it. God said, thank him. Thank him that he didn't strike you dead 
for one. And so let, let us do that. Let us just thank him for working um, good and from the bad. Thank you. Thank him for working um, the unknowing into the known, because once you know, then you are in, um, held accountable to do better. And so, Father, we thank you for allowing us to, allowing uh, um, us to receive you in this hour. We thank you for allowing those who have been walking falsely to switch teams, to switch teams, because it doesn't take a long time, y'all. When he turns the light on, it's literally like a flip of the light, like a light switch. He is a God of instant restoration in, in, in so many ways if we receive him as such. We must profess Jesus as King of glory and King of all creation, y'all. You must confess your false idolatry toward being a prophet of Christ when you were not. And, and that you, even if you intentionally or unintentionally did so, you must confess your sins of it. You must pray in humility. You must pray his salvation prayer. So let me help you in that way right now. So and this is something that we say often. This is something we say as a habit. This is something that you do innately. It's not just a one-time thing for yourself for real prophets is a banner it is a call to action it is something that we cheer chant and command at attention in the name of jesus yes in the mighty name of the father we do so so speak with me speak with me so that we may lift this burden off of you and get you into the bright brilliant clear light of our father in the name of jesus Romans 9 10 is where you'll find the salvation prayer printed and it basically says that for when a man confesses with his mouth and believes with his heart that Jesus Christ is Lord he shall be saved if he believes that the Lord was raised from the dead on the third day to salvation and glory to ascend into the heavens to rule and reign forevermore y'all and so if you believe that then you can pray the salvation prayer with faith that you will be saved but that the door would also be open that the gate would be open for you to go into and not just for salvation but that the lord would be opening the door for you to then walk in your called season to prepare and to equip and to learn so that you then can be ignited into your chosen season of actively doing the work of God in the name of Jesus. Yes? So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you allow us here today. Thank you that you allow me to be before you. Thank you that you have called me back to the gate to say, I am here because I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe that he is here for me, that he saved me through salvation by giving himself unto the cross that he rose again to fulfill the scriptures to save me, one who is not worthy. Father God, I thank you. I thank you that you hear me today, that I can call up to you and you respond to me even though I have set in a space of false identity. Lord, thank you. Thank you that I get to sit at your feet today and pray and ask for your forgiveness. I thank you that you stand and you stood before the masses to be crucified for my sake, for me to stand in this place in this time to serve you. I thank you that you listen. I thank you that you always answer. And I thank you that you rose again after going to the grave to defeat the enemy, that I get to stand here and call you Father. I thank you. I believe in you. I believe that your word is true. I believe that you will come again. I believe that you judge the living and the dead and that your kingdom will never have an end because you are the King of glory. You are the Almighty Father. You are the maker of heaven and earth and that you created it all. And I thank you that I get to share it with you. I thank you that I get to walk with you. I repent of my sins for not having believed before and wholeheartedly that I didn't go all in when you gave me the first opportunity or the third or whatever infinite opportunity that you've given me. I thank you that I get to do it now, Father. I am all in with you, Jesus, that I may walk righteously in your works, whatever it is that you have planned for me. Whether it's to be a prophet or not, Father, I receive you and what you have planned for me. I thank you that I get to forgive others. I thank you that you cleanse my heart well, that I get to receive the the mercy that you give but i also get to believe and know that as i give forgiveness to others that you will then receive me fully into your flock i thank you that as i give this blessing to others that they too will receive the same mercy that you're giving me right now i thank you lord god that i get to praise your name 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your grace and your mercy being on my life. I thank you that I get to do it again, that I get to turn and do it again, because you are a God who loves and you do not condemn those who are trying to walk with you righteously. In your mighty name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Yes, isn't that so good that we can just say, I'm sorry, Father. I'm sorry that I crashed and burned it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Can I try it again? And he's gonna say, yes, you can try it again. He gives an infinite number of yes, you can try it again, y'all. That is why our God is the one true God. Ah, oh, it's so good. So now let's move into our next thought because there's a little bit left and you're gonna love it and I want you to receive it. Your fifth point of correction to walk in the light with Jesus as a true prophet, not a false prophet, whether intentionally or unintentionally, because the steps are the same for both. God said, my sheep know my voice. They know each other. They know when to speak and when not to speak. They offer help even to false prophets, even to witches and warlocks, even to those who are not walking upright with God because I command them to do so because it's what I would do. There is no condemnation today. Today is salvation, y'all. Yes, if you proceed as instructed, there is no shame if you do the necessary flesh humbling works, do the flesh humbling sacrifices because you want to serve me righteously, yes? Oh, he's so good. God said he will make your transition seamlessly smooth. Mm -mm -mm. Y'all will tell of your story to reveal my glory. God said, I will give you the words to say and to share. I will not let them harm you. I will protect you in a restoring safe space. This time, this time, just give me your entire life. Not just the viewable parts that you post online. You must give me all the darkness, all the baggage, all the hurt and the bitterness, the crappy, the stinky, the filthy, the demonic parts. Yes, the demonic parts that you are in. Give them to me. God said you must create an atmosphere that allows Holy Spirit to work in you. So you must fast and not tell a soul. You must pray without ceasing. You must pray from your heart, pray from your mind, pray from your body, pray from every emotion while praying in the spirit, denouncing the demonic, satanic, evil covenants, the curses, the altars, and all the idolatries and the associations and the issues all that other ish, yes, that you have coveted it before me. The so time check was around 921, and so Hebrews 921, that means to scatter, and then that drilled itself down to Hebrews 6504, and your scripture is Daniel 414 for that. And then looking at Greek 921, that means son of Nabus, that is prophecy. So Nabus means prophecy. Oh, so good how he connects it together. So that drills itself down to mean son. And so a corresponding word of Hebrew 50, 29 brings you down to the word prophet, y'all. All the way down to prophet in Jesus' name. Ezra 6, 14 is your scripture that aligns to that because God said, if you are truly mine, if you believe your works are of my house, do the works of my people. Don't skip steps. Don't ignore me and don't listen to the enemy posing as me. Discern. You all have discernment, he says. Even before you get receiving Holy Spirit, discern. Ask questions. I will always answer my children. God said, if you would like to share your story in that safe space, then I, meaning me, I have been assigned to help you. I have been assigned to mentor you. Why me? I asked, because I did ask. <laughs> and he said, because I ran full sprint away from being, being the one. I avoided the house of the prophet and the house of the apostle like I had the plague. So he gave me a few just to remind me. <laughs> and he did, y'all. He did. That's how vegan showed up. Uh, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and I'm not saying vegan is bad i'm saying vegan is the solution to the plague that he gave me in jesus name so god said i can help you identify if you are a false prophet or if you need help training to strengthen your prophet gift i can help you so please reach out via email details are in the description box 
and then just make sure that you know that um, you're inquiring about the information about how to level up from being a false prophet to becoming a real prophet or in the fivefold ministry because again some of you are not even prophets um, as your primary that may be your secondary or an auxiliary gifting that you have but you're operating out of place in Jesus name and we want to be in position because when you're in position and in place then you're all of his promises come to you. You get the promises that are assigned to you because you're in the position to receive said promises. When you're out of place and working as a false prophet in uh, whether you know it or not, then that takes you out of position to receive your gifts. They're just passing you. They're passing you because you're not where you're supposed to be to receive your mail in Jesus name. Amen. I pray that this word gives you clarity for those who have asked or those who have asked in secret place. Lord, am I a false prophet because I'm doing all this work and nothing has happened. It has not come to fruition. If this word spoke to you in any way, know that the Lord is not condemning you. He is rebuking you. He is correcting you. He is bringing you teaching because he loves you, which is what the father does. That is what our good father will do when you are called to him, y'all, in Jesus name. Oh, he's so good. So thank you, father, for the word. Thank you for the revelation and thank you for the opportunity to do um, a correct work, to come to correction, to bring it forth in the way that brings you all the glory. Yes. Because when you get the glory, we get a brand new story called a testimony in Jesus name. Yes. So like, share, and subscribe if you have not done so. And looking at the stats, you guys are watching. I'm thankful and grateful that you're watching. And I got um, overwhelmingly about 75 new percent of you are newcomers, like new first timers, new to the channel. Hit the subscribe button, all 75% of you. <laughs> what are you waiting for? If you are needing a house to teach you, needing a house to grow in, and needing a house to be nurtured in, that is the only way that you are going to avoid some of the pitfalls is, is that you stick to one house, learn all that you're supposed to learn, glean all you're supposed to glean from one house before jumping to a next one and jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping because you're opening yourself up to so many different voices. And while some of those voices are beautiful voices and they are God sent voices, Holy Spirit is also telling you, slow down. You can't eat steak and eat vegetables at the exact same time. You'll mess around and choke yourself or you're going to end up doing something that the, the enemy uses against you. And so you want to just lean in, hit subscribe, and then comment, share, and like. I want you guys to be a part of this. This is your house too. And so you get a voice. I need to hear and understand what it is that you need and what you're wanting to learn. And so um, thank you for my returners. Thank you for everyone who has um, sewn into the ministry. So in so the Lord can water your works and you get what you want out of this season that we are in because we are in restoration, y'all. And it is harvest. The Lord has said it is harvest, harvest, harvest. And it is time for you to receive all that you have been praying for in Jesus name. Now, God said go disrupt some issues. Glory, y'all. Bye.